you are on to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. From two, tomorrow morning I'll finish on the other two, then I'll take off for my trip. That's when we will now see people who are catching it. Because sometimes you put early morning meeting, you even put it at seven, you see some strolling in by nine. You don't know things. There are many things you don't know. That's where you are where you are. My pastor told me how he was in Winners Chapel on a Sunday morning. He wanted to go and see how these people are doing their services. That's a man who is a success at that level. My pastor, a success, a general at that level. Yet he went down, humbled himself, attended the service without letting Bishop Wedipo, his friend, know about it. And then he sat in the middle. He said he saw that a service, first service was to start by 6 o'clock. He said by 5, half of the hall was full. And different things were happening in different places. This other group, ushers were busy here praying. Choir was already dressed and seated. They were praying. A drama group was doing their own that way. Uh, beautifiers, people who were called first timers, already had things said. He said, you see the order in the service. That was 5 a.m. You see, he was even thinking he was early. He came in there at 5. He said, church, he said, when did this will come in here? You see, workers of the church, more than, you see, that church has more than 15,000 workers for every service. He said, the whole place was full. Half. He said, before 10 minutes to 6, he looked gallery and down the whole place was full to overflow. Once it was 6 on the dot, prayer started. He went to some of his sisters. He said, Can you see what we don't know? He said, Prayer said that everything was happening like it was machine. Prayer finished at the time you finish. Praise, worship, kick off. Finishes at the time you finish. Worship takes off. Finishes, testimony comes. I'll be watching, and that service is for six to eight or six to nine. First service. And they will do more than a hundred things in that six to nine o'clock. Once it's nine, service is over. No Jacobis. Everybody is okay. They have two major doors. One is entrance, the other one is exit. Large doors. They will close the entrance door for a while, open the exit, and channel everybody through a particular whatever. Everybody is going through the exit as they are going, passing out from the exit. Five minutes. You see, it doesn't take ten minutes. Fifty thousand people are out of the hall. Five minutes. You see, he even followed them to go outside to be sure which people are coming for the second service. Whether it's the same set of human beings who are coming inside. He went and stood by the door, only to see that outside was really jammed with human beings who were waiting for the next service. The whole place was jammed. So this is where people are going. You see, and there's no traffic. Nothing like hold up. People are going now. No stampede. Since they started that it you now nobody has died out of stampede. What kind of order exhibits that? That's what government wants to come to the house of Jacob to come and learn. The whole hall will clear out, 50,000 will clear out, and they have a different route for going. This other was come, they have packed their cars, they open the door. He says, Five minutes, he says, not there. He was watching his clock. Five minutes, the whole hall has filled up again. And he looks, it's different people. Service kicks off again. That second service, the man comes back and preaches again. Service finishes. They say, say he went out five times. It was five services. He stayed there. His job, he wanted to stay there first service and second service. Maybe first service and go home and go back for his own service. But he had to hand over his own service to another pastor. He said, Be doing. I came here to learn. He said, He stayed for the whole five services. That's a disciplined man. That's the kind of father I have. For the five services, everything turned out strange to him. He said, no wonder. We are here now. Prayer starts. Drama is still on his way. Keyboardist is still looking for bike. That's if I thought even finally he up. The sound guy is still looking for water to take his bath. And then you are talking of taking nations. Nations will take you. And nobody will know. Many things you don't know about men who rule the world. All you know is that Mark Zuckerberg is controlling billions. You only read it in Forbes' book. 
you read it in uh, Forbes, how you get his second riches when they want. Warren is third riches, then go taste this one riches. You only read it. Go and find out their principles. You don't want that one. Even if they teach the principles, okay, apply the principles now so you can get the same reason. Mm-mm-mm. That's why it's painful. Don't touch me, dear. I like it the way I am. Is it making sense to you? But there's a ministry where everybody is a success. There are some people who will not be successful there. They just come because of what they have seen. But you see, they have the template that works. And that's what I have I'm putting into you. A framework I'm trying to inject into you. Some of you will only need to repent. Become pliable, become easy to allow this thing to happen. Remove childishness. A child cannot have dominion. A child differed nothing from a slave. Though he be heir of the father's wealth, he's kept under tutors until the time of maturity. Some of you is children behavior. Children talk. You finish you existing nonsense. You finish, go back to your house and go and pray. Let the things you have heard digest in your spirit. If you have one or two meetings to do, do it fast and get back. Go and pray. Let this thing digest in your spirit. You wake up the following morning, you know you have the cost to push you. You take your body, if it's a 7 o'clock meeting, you are appeared here at 6.30 latest. And sit down and take a position and be praying. I'm not jumping up and down and looking at and pressing forward and the sobbing every way. That's not going to happen. You're not going to have dominion that way. You're not going to have dominion that way. Dominion belongs to men. Let us make man in our image and our likeness. And let them have dominion. Dominion is for men. It is let us make a child. Children don't have dominion. It's men who do. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And then the government is up on his shoulders. You put government, you put responsibilities, you put dominion on the shoulders of sons. Not on the shoulders of children. Not on the shoulders of people who sleep. Four cardinal requirements, you know, to achieve this. Number one is called hard work. Everybody say hard work. Hard work. Hey, can you say that? Say hard work. Hard work. I want to hear you louder. Number two is smart work. Everybody says smart work. Smart work. Mm. God help me. I don't have all the time again. Number three is good work. Everybody say that. Good work. Number three is grace work. Everybody say it. Grace work. Okay. So let's start with the first one. I'll deal with the first and deal with the second one, then I'll close very quickly. Now find me that scripture. Um Proverbs 24 verse 27. You're going to have to punch the scriptures as fast as possible. Because I have a lot of things to point out. Proverbs 24 27. Hmm. Hard work is a principal tool for success. Proverbs 24 verse 27. It's a principal tool. Nothing works without it. You want us to become a successful church. Hard work. And I'll show you how hard work works. First key. You see, God said to Israel, I'm taking you out of Egypt to a land that flows with what? Milk and honey. That's all. Who is going to walk into the milk and honey? Who is going to walk into the children of Israel? Are you there now? Oh, good. Prepare your work or prepare your outside work. See what the scripture is saying? Make it fit for yourself in the field. And afterward, build your house. Your 
outside work. It takes hard work. Prepare your outside work. That thing that is committed into your hand, prepare yourself for it. Prepare that work. He said, make it fit for yourself in the field. That means this ministry is already a job. It's already a work. We need to prepare it and make it fit. And do you know what happens? The Bible says, make it fit not just for yourself. He said, make it fit for yourself. Where? In the field. That's in the streets. That's in your state, in the city. Make it fit. Everyone who sees it knows that this thing is very workable. This thing is successful. This thing is happening. This thing is, is invoked. This thing is succeeding. And what happens is that afterward, build your house. What it means is, stop dreaming about becoming successful except you put hard work into what you're doing. You will not build anything. You won't have anything. You will not be able to acquire anything in this life until you make your work fit. So if you maybe it's in the equipment in the music industry, she not did this thing. She needs beyond having talent. I need to labor the labor I must labor in this my unit in church under my pastor, partner with my pastor on this vision. Work the work I must work now. Give myself to this work. Make it fit. So that in the future I can travel the nations. So the lady knew. She knew. If I'm going to be what I am today, I have to put in a measure of work into myself i have to put in a measure of work into my calling i have to put in a measure of work into my life i have to put in a measure of work into my ministry for it to blossom brother chris knew if i'm going to be the pastor chris i will shake the world i need to put a number of work i have to make this work fit for myself even knows that all those Reverend Tom and all those guys, they know. It's not about uh, saying glory. It's not about saying we are uh, whatever. It's not about all this nonsense we profess sometimes. It's about taking pain now to put labor. Let me even define what hard work is for you. Look at how I put it here. I say hard work is the process of asserting physical energy, physical pain or pressure to get a work done. Hard work is not sweet. It comes with pain. But the truth is that hard work is what makes you escape the hard life. Can I preach to some people here tonight? I say hard work is what makes you escape the hard life. Life will be hard for you if you don't learn how to work hard. Don't let anybody deceive you that you don't need to hard work hard. You're under grace. I'm going to show you where that one comes in here. Hey, if we become a church that knows how to combine these four things, we'll be a principality. We'll be a principality. Not a church that's speaking tongue and grace, 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 and go and go and sleep at home. The first thing they to understand is this thing called hard work. That, okay, see for instance, it works even in school. So you're a student, you want to make a first class. You make it normal. The first class is not picked on the road. A is not easy to come by. You work hard at it. It will take you making series of A's in all your semesters and sessions for you to come by the issue of first class. Series of A's and a few B's. To score just four points. Four points is even first class. It's 4.5 that's first class. So you are 4.4. That's a 2 1 no? 4.49 whatever you say 2 1 you want to hit 4.5 if you know what you're going to work on you're going to do extra things normal people don't do you will study more than others are studying you will sacrifice more when others are going back for vacation you have to stay back in school maybe sometimes you're the only one in the hostel you have to read your textbook back to back 
You have to write all the queens and it's not sweet. You have to do that all the assignment is not sweet. You want the distinction in medicine, you don't know what that is. You want the first class in law, you don't understand what that is. It's five years of torture. Five years of suffering yourself. Five years of putting pain on yourself. You want a successful medical outing. Medical, what do you call it? Um, um, graduation. Why do you think all those doctors, when they are graduating, is usually a party? Some even print jota, some print um, polos, some print what do you call them, uh, do cake, some cook rice. Their families come from everywhere. That's why I don't even fancy matriculation. What are you need matriculation with rice and cake? Have you even started a journey? So you may not even graduate and you're doing magic, cooking rice and, and stew. Graduate, then you can do all those things you want, you want to do. I see those people, I, and I don't, I don't attack them on that. Because I know what they went through. So at this point, they are calling me everybody. They come, they do canopies, they do party, they even put chairman on vocation. They cook rice, bring cake, bring DJ, bring everything. Some will print jotters, print calendars, some will buy souvenirs. You would, it's even bigger than some weddings, I know. And then you hear the lady or the guy giving his testimony. He said, I don't know where to thank God for. He says, you won't understand. I've been there. You won't understand. You, don't, you won't understand what it means to pass second MB. You don't understand what it means to pass even the first. You don't know what it is to dissect a frog and it survives. You don't know what it is to dissect a cadaver. Ah, the traumas alone. The blood. There was no spirit. You do this one and then he fails. You have to go and do it again and blah, blah, blah. And finally you are given license to practice as a doctor. It's no ice cream that gets you there. Your mates will be going to go and watch cinema. You'll be telling them, I want to watch, but I cannot come. Why? I have something in mind to achieve here. That's where all things that are lawful and not all things that are expedient becomes, becomes useful to you. It becomes real in your life. Paul said, no one who worries entangled himself with the affairs of this life. Hard work will cost you opportunity costs. Achieving great feat in ministry will take you some pains. It will cost you some things. There are opportunity costs. What do you call opportunity for God? In economics. Real costs. Cost you things. The question now is, are you willing to pay the price? The price is only reserved for people who pay the price. Nothing is yours until you can pay for it. Destiny does not serve you free things. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. There's no free thing in it. I was watching a series of dramas. You need to see how crazy I am sometimes. A born envy on my WhatsApp. There are some I saved on my content. You see more than 100 drumming skits. Even up to this morning. You will see these guys on the drums. There was one I was reading last night. I think you were with me there. She was talking to me. I couldn't even give her attention. In my, in my house. I couldn't give her attention. Because what the guy was playing is crazy. His strokes, his, even the setting of the drum, the sound. He said, why is my own sounding different here? Why are the mistakes I hear sometimes? He said, the guy is not talented. He is. He's not working hard. He's babbing here. Somebody wakes up in the morning. His job is to sit down on that drum every day. And then he forfeits meals. He forfeits so many other frivolities. And he sits down there playing, 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 training. I see the kind of skits they use. I see the kind of equipment they use. I see that drum got into this level. Has drum reached this height? They speed in their hands. No mistake. They will play like that for 15 minutes. You see some of them have to gym to, be, to keep fit. Even this one who plays drum here, I don't know that you gym. I don't know that you do, do you do sports or do you do race. These guys have to run. You see their muscles. They have to do jogging. They have to do exercise to keep fit. They play and they are rolling. They are running. They are doing all those rollings back and front. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, they are still there. Non tired, non stop. Some programs, some musical beats. 
keyboard beats from musical they don't know, was it jazz jazz beats sax and all that he programs it then he will use his drum he will play play something he will record it the thing will be played he will do another thing play the thumbs do one or two things record it he will start playing as a drum is a studio he will record that maybe symbols and all that it will be played program the beat it will be played then he will start his kick there's one he will do double pedal I'm not sure you now here knows how to use double pedal pedal with double double yes it's the truth I've not seen you practice with that show me where you've been practicing where you don't even know how to set this one here on Sunday you were playing with the team was how they used the term everything used well, you will still play with broken sticks is that a man who wants to travel to New York and go and play? When a boy called Justin Wilson of four years old is already playing better in his father's house. Every morning that's his job. His school is home school. The father is a keyboardist. The wife is a solo singer. Even the daughter who is nine months old is already singing. You are here locked up in a world of mediocrity. When I talk to you, you are doing face. You don't know anything. You will die in a back like here. Because I place you go to, you can't touch any stick. See? You can't touch any keyboard. Here yeah, you sing and you think you've arrived. You go and see that you're doing, madam. Go and watch what I watch. Boys are walking. Go and watch his in boats. When he practices to be the fastest runner in the world. You see, you know, he carry. Go and watch the new one they call Tyson. Is it uh, Fury Tyson? What do you call his name? The boxer. What's his name? Eh? Not Mike Tyson. What do you call it? Tyson Fury. Eh? The new world champion or whatever they call him. He beat somebody in the ring to a point that the person's ear drum blast. They show the person's If you see the person's face, even a trailer accident can do that to a human being. And then every time Tyson Fury wants to enter the ring, he doesn't profess his skills. What he professes is Jesus. Yes, that's it. Before he goes to fight Tyson Fury, they were even interviewing him recently on the street. So, how did you come about all this? He said, Jesus, I bet, I, I bet you if you give your life to Jesus, he will do great and mighty things. You ask him a question, he will tell you about Jesus. He preaches. Before he enters the ring, he comes out and leaves up his life. He said, Jesus, he's the one with the trophy. He's the one I'm here to win the trophy for. He's on the, I didn't come here to win for myself. I came here to win for Jesus. I watched the videos. I'm ahead of you all. You are locked up in a world of mediocrity. That's so why you don't know anything going on even in the world. You bring spoil. I was talking with a lawyer, a Muslim lawyer, I said, I wowed him. Anything he talks, I will count, I will put it. This other lady is here shouting from behind. He said, My pastor has killed me. Any feud. He's talking politics. He's calling. Before he even mentioned, I will call the name for him. He talks, he wants to mention, I'll call the date for him. Any feud he enters, I was even giving him history on his Islamic religion. He mentioned, was talking about some whatever, talked about the crusaders. I said, let me tell you about the crusaders. I took him back to history before this one, that's how this one came about. He will look at me. He will talk to you, I will take it beyond. He will talk to you, I will take it beyond. All kinds of things. He met a pastor who is not a, 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 a you know, carrying cassock and get around a place. He's not knowing what to do or what to say. So some of you are mundane pastors, obsolete pastors. Oh, you, know, the, you don't know anything happening in your world. It's laziness, slothfulness. Yet you want to influence your generation. Hard work. The principle of hard work states if you want things to work, work hard. If you want to be successful, work hard hard, work longer on what it is you work on. You are a pastor. For some of you, you are already giving cities to go and pastor. You are waiting for all the witches to die before you blow on there. You are joking. Before you came there, witches already had their houses. Yeah, that's not your problem. Go there with a vision. But you go there with a vision. Or you work on that vision. Work out your salvation there with fear and trembling. You can't come and be complaining nothing is working when you're not working. Even <laughs> Galatians, Paul was saying, having done all to stand, he still says stand. 
having you. Are you see, a man who has own all to stand, he's still telling stand. Oh yeah, put your belt off this one. Oh yeah, put your helmet of salvation. Oh yeah, carry your shield of faith. Oh yeah, carry your sword of the spirit. Oh yeah, carry your your uh, shield, the, go- the gospel, the preparation of whatever. Oh yeah, carry this other one. That's a man who has own all to stand. He still told him stand. They sent you to a place to go and do ministry. You have not even stood. You're already complaining. You have not done the first stand before the even second stand. You're already giving up. The principle of hard work states that nothing works until you work. The principle of hard work states that if you want your work to show results, you must work long enough. You must work long enough. What that means is that you do not do small if you want to have so much. You do much. The Bible says to him much is given. Much is what? Is that a scripture or a particular statement or whatever? It's in the scripture now. To him much is given. Much is what? So they give you much. Great future. You are doing little to get a great vision come to pass. Who tells you that? Some of you, the way you sing, you think you can sing like that outside this country. You throw your saliva from the audience. I'm trying in South Africa. They'll stone you. Have you heard South Africans sing? You're going to do this nonsense some of you are doing here. Because you are sleeping. You can't see far. Some of you who are comfortable with your empty seat in church. You can't see far. Who is ever going to invite you to preach where human beings are gathered without your scanty church? You see, when they do serious meetings in this country, you want to call people in the clergy fold. They know people they go to call. The problem with the average Christian is laziness. Everybody say laziness. There's a problem with some of you, especially some of these girls sitting down there. They can't sit down in training for so long, their face will show it. They can't read a page of a book. Mm-mm. They want it pleasure, 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 pleasure. They don't want pain. They don't want discipline. They don't want that physical pleasure like I defined it here. Hard work is a process of a certain physical energy or pain or pleasure to get the work done. It is the amount of labor asserted on a job to bring about desired results. That's hard work. That's my definition. You won't find it in the dictionary. The amount of labor. Have you seen orange? Before. You want to take orange. You peel it. Is that correct? And you want to take the, the liquid, the juice in the orange. What do you do to it? What do you do to the orange? You squeeze it. Hmm? If the orange tells you how it feels when they are squeezing it, have they squeezed your arm before? Let me try to squeeze your arm. Stand. How do you feel? You feel pain? If the orange has mouth to tell you how it feels. Just use this little thing I did to you now to understand. That's how you squeeze orange and you don't understand. But is that squeezing that is bringing out the juice? You refuse to squeeze it, the contents, the potentials inside will be buried. What about you eating bag? You want to drink hot tea, good tea. Eh? You get a lip tea, put it in cold water. What will you drink? It's just water that changes color. It's not lip tea, it's just water that manages to change color. Because the real lip tea is still trapped inside. If you want to drink lip tea, get hot water and then put the tea bag inside the lip tea. You will see everything will come out. Now, this other church is doing that their regular snob they do every year. Are you aware of it? Every day I'm on Facebook, I see them. They're on campus. They have different polos. They have different clothes. 
they go in mass. You see them class to class, uh, uh, feta to feta, epsu to epsu, this or that, fune to fune, nothing to nothing. In mass, sweat, some tie a tie, some tie their sweat on their distant like this, with their trousers. They are working. You know what they are working for? To jam that stadium. You take it in Rama, 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 worry, 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 worry. They will jam that stadium. Do you know your number here can jam that stadium? Hello. What is going to jam it up? Do you think it's, let's play, worry, 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 bring billboard. Can't you see there are billboards in the city? They will bring billboard. There is a billboard that will bring you to the stadium. Billboard will create awareness. Human beings will bring human beings. And the good day will target. They wake up in the morning. In Jesus' name, Amen. And they go into the field. You will want to do kata kata kata. When you finish doing your kata 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 kata, you will have kata kata on your head because you're not going out to go and do the job. When you see other people functioning and getting results, ask what do they know? Then number two, what are they doing? If this thing you start knowing what they know and doing what they do, they will get even more results. That church, when it's keeping it small, it's not Satan. You have not done what others did to fill up their own church. You have not done what others did. Hey, I was reading a post by Bishop Wale okay, today. Today, today. He said, early in their ministry days, even before they started church, he said, him and Bishop Wale, they have been close, they are very close, they are friends. You know, I'm bringing Bishop Wale okay, for a program here this year. So, okay, hold it, hold it, hold it. I know you like to clap, but listen to this one. The man said that they were very close and there was this particular minister they looked up to so closely they loved him he was ahead of them the man was such a dynamic charismatic minister he said that he was so anointed and gifted that him bishop only okay and B- bishop david Obu were struggling to carry his bible yes bishop we will be struggling with bishop only okay or who will carry his bible so today he's going for a meeting bishop only okay struggling i will carry his bible before the man goes up to go and preach he's bishop well okay i'll carry a grand the other day is going to be Bishop David He said, but it's so shocking. After a few years, this man they were looking up to so much fell for the wrong counsel. And then he abandoned that ministry, gave up on You know, a few things happened, he didn't get into details that much. And then why he was okay, he said, I know some of you think it was maybe fornication or whatever. He said, it's not the, the other things that makes people not succeed in ministry. Like laziness can kill you in ministry. God even said, you are a priest. And you have rejected knowledge. In Hosea now, he said, because you have rejected knowledge, I have rejected you from being priest of my people. You think it's only for occasion I kill you in ministry. It's part of, but do you know even lack of knowledge? But you perish for lack of understanding, it can kill you. Perish for lack of knowledge, it can kill you. It can send you out of ministry. Indiscipline can destroy your ministry. This man that they used to carry his Bible, is gone. Them who used to carry Bible, see where they are now. So I began to wonder, even that man, they didn't mention his name. I couldn't guess who the man is. I said, who is that kind of a man? How great will he be? How great would he have been in comparison to the kind of greatness that Rebo has now? If that man was, how would he have been great for crying out loud? Somebody be so Rebo and one who can carry Bible for, what would have been his greatness like? So this is the lesson out of that. He that thinks and stands should take heed as he falls. Think you are talented, you are gifted. Be there celebrating talent and gifts. Talent is not enough. Add hard work to that your ministry. That is physical labor. For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.